What did you do differently this time than you did in the May 6th primary? You just barely made the primary, and now here, uh, early returns show that you're leading. Well, I think the uh, main thing, that here we were head-to-head -head with uh, Mr. Yarbrough, and it gave a pretty direct confrontation on the issues as well as on the personalities, and uh, we were not quite so submerged by other races. There were a great many local races, of course, the gubernatorial race. It still took a good deal of the uh, fanfare this time, but there was a lot more attention on the race, and I think that helped us. Do you think that the age factor, which has been brought out, has uh, been brought out more since the May 6th primary than it has been that was before? I don't know that uh, I've had any more to say about it. Uh, of course, you know, I mentioned that he was a senior citizen at the time he filed, and that's really been all, about all I've had to say. Uh, I think Mr. Yarber's nursed it along a little bit. He probably had some part to play in this, but it's very difficult for me to say how much. We tried to spend uh, practically all our time talking about issues and where we differed with Mr. Yarber. Do you have at this point anything that you can look forward to to November that uh, you're going to do uh, specific? Senator Tower's been in quite some time now. Well, I, uh, to be honest with you, haven't devoted a lot of time to Mr. Tower's situation in the last several months, but I am sure that we will have a uh, good confrontation on the uh, issues on his record, or rather his uh, lack of a record, and uh, I'll be running as a Democrat, and he is a Republican. So I think there's going to be plenty to talk about and a good deal of discussion in a constructive way. We heard a rumor yesterday, and it was verified today, that the tour of the Russian team to the United States will possibly be canceled. Communications are extremely difficult at this late date uh, to Russia. We don't have our avail to the hotline, <laughs> but uh, basically the circumstances as we understand it is that the Moscow team very much wants to come but that the Russian Federation is taking the position that they want a second look at the tour and are thinking of the possibility of canceling it. The reason for this uh, it stems from a game about 10 days ago that was played between Moscow Dynamo and Glasgow Celtic, and this was a championship game of the European Cup of Champions Cup. Is that the right way to say it? It's a kind of a mouthful name, but it was a game that was played in Spain between Glasgow Celtic and Moscow Dynamo. Uh, the game got out of hand. The fan, Scottish fans rioted on the field, and in the process, uh, they struck one of the Russian players with a bottle or fist or something, and the Russians lost the game 3-2, to two, but they are protesting the game and asking for a replay of the game, which was a, a very, very big game in European soccer. And uh, as it's our understanding, what we've learned today is that there will be a preliminary hearing tomorrow, not tomorrow, but uh, Monday in Vienna, and the entire Russian Federation is going to attend, and I, I suppose Moscow Dynamo representatives also. And we will not uh, know until sometime Monday as to whether the tour is going to be on. Well, today's the day. You know, Texans have a chance to really
say something about what kind of government they want. And I think it's our responsibility to to do what we feel we need to do. You came out to vote today, and uh, like many other Texans, of course, did you have a particular candidate you were supporting and felt strongly about? Um, because of the job that I have, I can't really support any particular candidate, but I voted for Sissy. <laughs> These airline passengers here at Love Field will have to pay a dollar extra on their tickets if the Dallas City Council decides to vote in favor of the one dollar head tax on implaining passengers. That council meeting Monday will be a head-on clash between forces for and against the controversial head tax. Most of the city councilmen openly support it, but representatives of the airlines and passengers associations are fighting hard against it. We're opposing the head tax because as we've said before, we think it's discriminatory, we think that it discourages air travel, and we think that it's a form of taxation without representation. Well, it certainly is taxation without representation, except it's taxation for the right to use. This is a use tax, uh, and it's paid for by people who use it. We are paying. The user has paid quite successfully for Love Field over all the years that it's been in existence. We've retired through our ticket purchases and through the various inflated prices we pay when we use the facility, like a dollar for a hamburger, we have been paying for Love Field. Well, we have uh, approximately $14 million worth of bonds still to go on the airport, uh, $4 million uh, uh, general obligation bonds and $10 million revenue bonds. And uh, this would go to reduce that debt because the revenue is going to drop off drastically when the new airport opens. And this gives us an opportunity to apply about a quarter of a million dollars a month to the, those, those debts. These bonds uh, and the fact that they were owed was well known to the City Council of Dallas when they entered into the agreement and went forward with the new Dallas-Fort Worth Interregional Airport. Most of these people who fly only occasionally won't feel the loss of one dollar. But for those businessmen and others who fly every week, an extra dollar every flight won't be peanuts. Martha McIntyre, Channel 8 News on the Move at Dallas Love Field. I think that uh, with the uh, few precincts that are outstanding that the vote now looks like we just didn't get enough vote and that uh, my opponent has won the Democratic nomination. And I do want to congratulate my opponent and to wish him well as the Democratic nominee. Senator, do you feel that there was any one or maybe two things that caused uh, Mr. Milford to win the election after you won the primary, the most votes in the primary, but forced into a runoff? No, I don't know of any one thing. Uh, I guess the only one thing was just we just didn't get enough votes. But I, I don't think in these uh, races you can pinpoint it to one thing or two things. I think that uh, there are just a, a, multiple, a multitude of things that uh, make people's minds up, and I, I don't think you can pinpoint it.
he's a very big, strong lad, you know, and uh, he scored a great goal against us last year. And uh, we've got a, well, we've worked out a little plan. We think we can sort of tie him down a little bit. You don't want to divulge the plan right now, though? No, I don't think so. <laughs> now, he's had six goals, has he not, this year? More than uh, the Tornado as a total team has scored. Yes, uh, this has been a little bit of our problem. We haven't been able to get the ball in the back of the net. And, uh, uh, they, well, they've got uh, Randy Horton and they've got this other um, Israeli player, another inside forward, who's been scoring goals as well. And they're very dangerous. That's where they're strong, it's up front, you know. What type of player is Horton? What sort of uh, moves does he have that other fellows don't? Well, in effect, he's got moves. He's not really a very skillful player. It's just his size, you know, and he's very good in the air. And uh, they seem to play to him. You know, this is their play. They play the long ball at the middle to him, you know. In any free kicks around the penalty area, they always play to him for his head for the flick-ons, you know, for little players coming in on the blind side. And this year they've got Johnny Kerr, the ex-Washington player, who's very good at this, you know, picking out the, the little flicks off the big fella, you know. Sunny skies and warm temperatures greeted most voters across Texas today, giving strength to predictions that a record number of Texans would cast their ballots in the Democratic runoff. Predictions are that more than a million and a half Texans will vote in today's Democratic runoff, compared with a prediction of about 65,000 in the Republican runoff. Most of the voters' attention has been drawn to the Democratic statewide races, where hotly contested campaigns have been waged for governor, lieutenant governor, and U.S. senator. The only Republican race generating the statewide attention is the one for governor. Reports from across the state thus far indicate that the voter turnout ranges from light to heavy, depending on the area. Among those voting, the candidates themselves. Here in Dallas, U.S. Senate candidate Barefoot Sanders voted with his wife and a daughter about 11 o'clock this morning. And like most other candidates, Sanders was confident of victory. The polls remain open for about another hour until 7 o'clock, and since the runoff ballots are much shorter than those in the first primary, Texans should learn earlier tonight than they did in May how accurate all these predictions turned out to be. Jack Hill, Channel 8 News on the Move. My, I'll tell you, it's just according to how much practice a fella gets in his occupation, I, I'd say that. Uh, uh, but uh, it takes a lot of practice on back in the trailer. Marvin, you defended champ from last year here in the tractor competition in Wise County. Was any uh, any difference in the qualifications this year than last year? No, it was about the same amount of qualifications, but I don't know if the competition is stronger this year than it was last year or not. Did the course run a little harder this year? I believe a little harder back this tractor was, trailer it was than last year. How many hours a day do you have to train to keep up your efficient uh, top form when you're driving this tractor? Oh, well, I'm just a dairy farmer and I have to use tractor every day and early. And so it's just something natural for me to do. Well, do you get up and lift weights or jog a mile every morning or anything to keep in shape to defend your title? Oh, no, I just get up and yuck him old cow and do the rest. Does that keep your arms pretty well in shape so you can handle that steering wheel without any difficulty? Oh, well, they got power steering on these tractors now. You don't have to be very stout to move them.